This is one of, if not the easiest course that I've ever taken in my engineering undergrad so far. If you've taken Civil 250 already, it's basically on that level in terms of difficulty or lack of difficulty. What is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery, and I've just finished my third year of electrical engineering at UBC. Of the nine courses that I took this year, one of these courses was APSI 450. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through everything I wish I knew before I took this course and some survival tips to help you get through it. And just as a disclaimer here, everything mentioned in this video is based on my experience of taking APSI 450 during term one of the 2024-2025 school year with Professor Jackie Nelson. And all the information in this video is subject to change in the future, such as grading schemes, assignment and exam formatting, and course content. Lastly, timestamps will be in the description below if you want to reference certain parts of this video again in the future. All right, so what is AppSci 450 all about? In this course, you'll learn about engineering law and ethics, covering concepts such as ethics in a professional setting, how law is intertwined with engineering in Canada, how a business is organized, the guidelines behind innovation in engineering, and corruption. AppSci 450 is an online course and is offered in both semesters in the winter term, but is taught by different professors and has a slightly different course structure between the terms. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to go into specifics on term one of AppSci 450 with Professor Jackie Nelson, but I'll provide some insights on what I've heard about AppSci 450 in term two this year. Now that we know what the course is about, let's get into how AppSci 450 will be structured for any given week and the materials that you'll need for this course. Each week on Monday, there will be a bunch of video lectures, lecture slides, readings, and case studies that will be released on a module on Canvas, all centered around a certain concept or topic. You're supposed to go through these materials on your own time, and once you're done, you will then complete a 10 question multiple choice quiz for that week. The questions are based on that week's content and generally speaking, they're fairly easy to complete and not stress inducing at all. And this cycle repeats for the whole semester. In terms of assignments, halfway through the term, my section of AppSci 450 had a 500 word persuasive essay we had to write about an assigned topic about professional ethics and practices. For example, the topic that I had to write about was whether or not there was a conflict between employer expectations and professional ethics. You must choose a stance on the topic, write about it, and then cite your sources properly. This took me one day to do. For the other section of AppSci 450 in Term 2, I recall them doing an in-person group presentation about a certain topic related to professional ethics. They were randomly assigned into groups of 10 people, given a random topic related to engineering ethics, and had to create a presentation where each person spoke for at least one minute, totaling up to a 10 minute presentation. Now let's get into what you're actually going to learn in AppSci 450. At the start of the course, you'll get an introduction to the different Canadian engineering bodies and their codes of ethics, what professional engineering and what the EGBC is, conflict of interest and what constitutes a conflict of interest, and whistleblowing. You'll then cover the relationship between Canadian law and engineering by discussing contract law, tort law, employment law, and intellectual property law. This will bring you to about the halfway point in the course. You'll then move on to some business related things in engineering, like how a business is organized, Aboriginal law, and equity and diversity in the workplace. This is followed by the successes, failures, and risk of innovation in engineering, and concluded by what corruption is and what it looks like pertaining to engineering. And that's pretty much everything that you're gonna learn in AppSci 450. In terms of the grading scheme and the exams for AppSci 450, here's the breakdown of everything that you'll be graded on and the weights associated with each item. For my section, our nine quizzes were worth 45% of our grade, our written assignment was worth 15%, and our final exam was worth 40%. Our final exam was an online 30 question open book multiple choice exam on Canvas that we had two hours to complete. 
but realistically, you'll probably finish it in less than an hour and still do pretty well on it. In fact, the average for our final exam was a 26 out of 30. I did hear that the AppSite 450 session in Term 2 actually had an in-person final exam, unless you declared at the beginning of the course that you were on co-op out of town. And their exam was also multiple choice and open book on Canvas, but just in person. All right, now onto some survival tips, advice, and miscellaneous things to know before heading into AppSite 450. I honestly don't know what advice to give. This is one of, if not the easiest course that I've ever taken in my engineering undergrad so far. If you've taken Civil 250 already, it's basically on that level in terms of difficulty or lack of difficulty. So if you just do the quizzes on time, put minimal effort on the assignments and briefly review everything for the final exam, you'll be able to easily pass the course. In fact, I feel like most of the quizzes can actually be solved or rather completed or actually rather passed with just basic common sense and a little bit of reading through the lecture slides. And besides, this course is only worth two credits, so whether or not you do well in the course, it really won't affect your GPA all that much. But if you are curious, I scored an 86% in AppSite 450, and the class average was 84%. And that's pretty much everything you need to know before going into AppSite 450. I really, really hope this video helps you guys out so you guys don't have to suffer as much as I did in third year. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to notify whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.